Hello, my friend. Today we're going to talk about junk bonds. <laughs> yes, junk bonds uh, are also known as high yield bonds. And you know, with high yield comes high risk. And what is the risk we're talking about? Well, the risk that the issuer doesn't pay it back. So that's the credit risk. They call it credit risk. And, um, and there is a high degree of credit risk because the issuer is not a solvent. They don't have as much profits. They don't have a lot of cash flow. And so they issue these bonds and they have a higher credit rating than other triple A bonds out there. And sometimes the yield on junk bonds um, approximates the yield on the stock index, 10%, you know, magical. But the difference is that the 10% you get in the stocks in the S&P 500, those are the bluest of the blue ships, the best companies in the world. And the yield that you get on a junk bond is of a lower quality company, a company that may go out of business. So if you buy individual bonds, you, you may have to do a lot of analysis to make sure that you're not getting a, a clunker. But there's also uh, ETFs that deal in junk bonds. Uh, one of them is JNK. But, you know, it's generally something that I discourage. I mean, there's no need to go into junk bonds. You can just buy the index fund and do much better. Uh, you know, bonds also have the interest rate risk. You know, when interest rates go up, the bond you're holding goes down in value because it has to compete with other bonds that are selling at a higher interest rate, right? And so the discount, together with the coupon that the bond pays, makes up a, a yield similar to what current uh, interest rates are. So that's why bond prices go down when interest rates go up. It's the reverse, when interest rates come down, then the bond that you're holding, which may have a coupon that is higher than the ones offered in the market at that time, uh, then you, you can command a premium on the value of your bond beyond the principal. And so that's, uh, that's an adjustment that happens automatically in the bond market. So uh, when you have bonds, you suppose you have a bond portfolio with a, you know, a ladder of maturities, you have reinvestment risk, right? If interest rates go down, then you have to reinvest your money at a lower interest rate than you were, that your portfolio was yielding before. So your portfolio yield overall will come down. And so one way of mitigating reinvestment risk is by buying zero coupon bonds, where there's no coupon, so there's no interest rate paid. And all you're getting is the discount. It's a deep discount up front, and mathematically is computed, the yield is computed to maturity. So, um, you know, normally, the, the, the companies uh, used to deposit their money and individuals with banks and banks would lend money to commercial uh, clients. And these companies uh, grew so big and sometimes they had even uh, better credit rating than the banks themselves. And so they were able to issue bonds directly in the market bypassing the the banks, which were normally financial intermediaries between savers and and users of money, right, the, with loans, and so the banks uh, were left with uh, with the other uh, less credit worthy clients or corporate clients, and so uh, this this intermediation was going on for a period, and then um, and then uh, you know. In the 1980s, they figured out that the companies that were borrowing directly from the banks, they could issue bonds that had a higher yield than what normal bonds were trading at. And so uh, the yield on the young bonds were lower than the interest rates that these companies were paying the banks. And so they were cutting the middleman out. The bank was, was left out in many of these transactions. And so the banks were uh, saddled with the lower, uh, you know, companies, companies that were not as big, uh, companies that, uh, or individuals, uh, personal loans, car loans, mortgages, and commercial loans of smaller amounts or uh, smaller companies. 
so because you needed some size to make the offering worth it because you had to pay a lot of fixed costs to issue bonds in lawyer fees and on the writing fees and all that so uh, so there and that's it and you know at times you know the bond market is uh, it's a little bit out of whack you know uh, there was a time where you could actually make a profit if you wanted to invest in US Treasuries um, but uh, Treasury yields were so low you could do it by investing in a bank certificates of deposit FDIC insured which is uh, almost like a treasury right if you are under the two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollar insurance limit right so if you invested in a ladder maturity of uh, CDs comparable to what you had in in the US treasuries then you know you had a higher yield by by doing that it was an interesting bit nowadays you know bank CDs are very low uh, even lower than US Treasury so the opportunity is for that arbitrage is no longer there but uh, those uh, government bonds in Europe and Asia that have negative interest rates who would do that who would if you hold it to maturity you're guaranteed to lose money because your interest rates are negative so you you you're you're buying these bonds at a premium and so at maturity they're just gonna pay the principal not the premium so the only opportunity for you to make money doing that is if interest rates go further into negative territory and they go further down so that you can expect to have a capital gain. But that's crazy. It's crazy to do that. Why would anybody invest in bonds these days? You know, if in, you, in the US with a negative, with positive interest rates, but very low, like 1% uh, for US treasury bonds of 10 years, if you hold it for 10 years until maturity, you make 10% of your money, 1% every year. One times 10 is 10%. But instead, if you put that same amount of money into a, an S&P 500 index for the same 10 years, at 10% compounded, your money will grow to 159%. You would more than double your money. So in, in stocks, you have a multiple in bonds you have a fraction <laughs> that's the best way i can put it to you but uh anyway uh, these are just my opinions and estimates past performance is never a guarantee of future results and when investing you can't lose money i wish you the best my friend be well